I'm delighted to present our work on Migraine Tracker, which we use to examine patient experiences with goal-directed self-tracking for chronic health conditions. Self-tracking is of great value in managing chronic conditions as it allows the observation of symptoms beyond the clinical settings and in closer relation to the day-to-day -day treatments and contributors. This is especially true when symptoms occur over time and are not amenable to clinical testing, as is the case with migraines. Self-tracking is, however, not easy to do. One challenge is to decide on the data to track. People may not know where to start or what is relevant to track. This leaves many people too overwhelmed to even start tracking. Those who start tracking often end up tracking data that is irrelevant. They feel frustrated as much of their efforts are in vain. Not surprisingly, they abandon tracking. Tracking irrelevant data happens usually because tracking tools make and embed assumptions about what people want to achieve with tracking. These tools also assume people's needs may not change. These assumptions are typically misplaced, but people have little recourse for adjusting them. Let's say you're interested in improving your health and you consider tracking food. You find a food tracker and it asks you to record calories. Well, calories are interesting to know about, but what you really care about is whether you're eating balanced meals and that has nothing to do with the count of calories. You may even want to know calories at first, but you may later want this other piece of information about balanced meals. Unfortunately, the tool does not support your need as it assumes everyone wants to always know about calories. Another challenge in self-tracking is to connect the tracked data to one's needs. Even when tracked data is relevant, there are barriers translating them to insight. In keeping with our previous example, let's say you care about count of calories and the tool shows your calorie intake over time. But what you specifically wonder about is if you consume more calories than stress. You have the data, but no easy way of interpreting it as it relates to your goal. I want to note that deciding what to track and gaining relevant insights is even more challenging in self-tracking for managing conditions such as migraine because there is a lot of variation from one person to another. Okay, there are these challenges. What can we do about them? Well, we can explicitly account for goals in self-tracking tools. This is what we call goal-directed self-tracking. In this approach, people express what they want to achieve with tracking, that is their goals. Their expressions are then used to scaffold what is tracked, when and how. The expressions also drive preparation and presentation of data for interpretation. Let's see what this all means with Migraine Tracker, an app for self-tracking migraines. The first thing people are asked to do when they want to use the app is to express their goals. For example, they can say they want to learn about migraine contributors. They are then asked to decide which symptoms and contributors are relevant. Let's say they selected the stress. They are asked to articulate what they want to learn about the stress as a more fine-grained goal. They then choose how they want to record the stress accordingly. For example, that they want to know if they get more migraines when they are stressed, or if the levels of stress changes the severity of their migraines. They configure the app according to their goal and collect exactly and only the data that addresses those goals. Now, the question is whether and how this approach works. From Jesse Schroeder's work, we know setting up tracking around goals improves preparation stage of tracking when people plan on what to track and how. What remains to establish is whether the benefits extend to other stages of tracking, when people collect and integrate data, reflect on it, and take actions. This is the focus of our study using Migrate Tracker. Specifically, we establish whether people can successfully use and adjust a goal-based tracking setup, if they can more easily gain insights from the data, and how they act upon the insights. To answer these questions, 
They did a longitudinal study of migraine self-tracking with 10 patients and their three clinicians as they used the migraine tracker for over 12 months on average. For patients who met the screening criteria, we first asked about MIS and prior self-tracking experience in the initial interview. We also helped them configure migraine tracker app at this step. They started using the app as soon as they had a configuration in place. Patients next reviewed their setup with their clinician. We then asked patients about their experience using the app and obtained their feedback on goal-appropriate data summaries and visualizations in mid-tracking interview session. We did this again in end-of-tracking interview right before the final meeting between patients and clinicians when they met with their clinician for the second time to review their data and material. This step concluded the study, although some patients continued using the app after this step. What did we find? Briefly, with explicit goal expressions and scaffolding based on these expressions, patients were able to decide what to track and successfully align tracking to their needs. They were also able to recognize when and how to adjust their tracking. Their efforts led to relevant and useful knowledge that helped them better understand their condition and prepared them to discuss care with their clinicians and seek expertise when they most uh, needed it. They overall felt they took better care of themselves. Before I further unpack these findings, let me introduce a useful terminology. The observed patients had different types of goals. There were tracking goals that a specific tracking setup achieved, for example, presence of migraine or duration of sleep. There were information goals, the questions people wanted to answer with tracking, for example, what was the monthly migraine frequency. There were also management goals. These were often the desired health states to achieve, for example, improved symptoms. Constraints or values to meet fell under this class too things like availability of medication or funding agency. Another case of management goals were self-regulating behaviors, for example, holding oneself accountable to exercise. There is no strict sequencing among goal types from tracking to information to management, so we connect them by double arrows. Tracking goals usually but not always support management goals through information goals, for example, Records of migraine presence support information goal of monthly migraine frequency and subsequently the management goal of improvements in symptoms. Here, data from tracking matters. In the case of recording exercise days to encourage regular physical activity, there is no information goal involved and data from tracking does not matter much. I have shown one-on-one -on -one relations in these examples for simplicity, but in reality, goals often overlap. For example, a single tracking goal supported multiple information goals. In the remaining time, I use this terminology to cover three aspects of our findings. Evolution of goals, alignment of different goals and elements of tracking, and reflection as the driving force of goal evolution. Please refer to the paper for the other findings that highlight the role of goals in personalization and demonstrate the benefits they bring to taking actions. Starting with goal evolution, patients all pursued multiple goals that evolved over time. Some goals were resolved, for example, when someone learned alcohol is not a contributing factor. Some other goals were refined, for example, when someone sought the length of treated migraines instead of total lengths of migraines. Sometimes goals were deprioritized or completely abandoned. Some other times new goals became relevant. This resolution, refinement, or abandonment of goals or initiation of new ones happened across goal types. The changes were separate but often related. For example, when information goals were achieved, their associated tracking goals were abandoned unless they supported other new or existing information or management goals. Or knowledge around existing goals informed refined or new goals to follow up. 
Pursuing multiple evolving goals also meant people were at different stages of tracking for different goals. They achieved one goal but needed to continue others or start new ones. They paused one goal and resumed another. This observation seems too obvious when I say it, but models of self-tracking or goal evolution do not account for it. They assume single or separable goals. But once we recognize that people are simultaneously at different tracking stages and that there are these different types of goals, we can pursue goal-based design opportunities for self-tracking that better support goal evolution as we discuss in the paper. Recognizing distinct goal types that simultaneously evolve is also important as a successful tracking experience for our patients involved aligning and realigning these goal types. What does that mean? As patients describe their goals, they made connections between different management, information, and tracking goals, which help them operationalize those goals to a specific setup within the app. That is, the act of expressing goals led to the alignment of goals with each other and a tracking setup that is spoke to patients' needs. When goals evolved, they were realigned. For example, when existing tracking goals fell short of supporting refined or new information goals, they were adjusted. There was more to align than just goals for successful tracking. What do I mean by that? It was also important to use data models and tracking models in concert with goals. Data models are units of recording. For example, is it recorded against each day or each episode of migraine? Tracking models are different ways people record. For example, do they record every day or when something, usually a migraine, happens? Different models are relevant to different goals. For example, examining the connection between menstruation and migraines requires recording menstruation every day, not just when migraines happen. Getting total lengths of migraines means recording them by episode, not day. Supporting alignment and realignment of goals with each other and with other elements of tracking is an open design problem. Explicit goal expressions in our design were just a starting point, but further design for goal expression, review and feedback is needed for the mismatch and misalignment challenges as we discuss in the paper. Goals and their evolution are tightly connected to reflection. With tracking organized around explicit goals, reflection also happens around those goals, both at the time of recording and then reviewing the data retrospectively. Goals focus attention at the time of recording and facilitate new insights even without explicit data entry. For example, one patient learned migraines were related to the amount of alcohol even though she only recorded whether she consumed alcohol or not. She said the discovery was in concert with being really diligent about tracking on the app, but also just having her awareness and her life be very open to what were possible triggers. When retrospectively reviewing data around information goals, patients often describe patterns. They then try explaining them in relation to treatments or context, such as events or habits, especially when the patterns indicated a breakdown between patient's existing understanding and data. This inquiry sometimes expanded into considering multiple explanations, defining new concepts, and forming new hypotheses. This is all great. We do expect this to happen when people reflect. As people consider different explanations and hypotheses, they refine their information goals or form new and often more complex ones that they had not previously considered. That is, their information goals evolved. They then align these refined or new information goals with tracking goals, tracking models, and data models. This reflection and realignment process led them to realize if they needed additional data or if they needed to seek additional expertise from their clinician or their research team. This means the reflection process provided a mechanism for goal evolution, and we can support goal evolution by enabling different elements of reflection, such as concept definition, hypothesis formation, or hypothesis examination. To summarize, we examine patient experiences with goal-directed self-tracking for managing chronic conditions and learned of the importance of recognizing and designing for distinct goal types that overlap and evolve. Models of personal informatics should account for multiple goals in chronic condition management. Designs with explicit support for goal expressions can facilitate the alignment, adjustment, and realignment of goals as well as tracking and data models. They can also assist 
Reflection, which itself enables goal evolution.